We say all praises be to the Creator, all power to His people. In the name of Yahshua, the Black Revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom Aleichem. Giving a special salute to the Black Messiahs. Our motto is stop waiting for a Savior and be one. Stop waiting for a Savior and be one. Coming from the scripture, Genesis, first chapter, beginning with the, I'm sorry, second chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. Second chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a, a help meet for him. Coming from the book of Isaiah, 5th chapter, 20th verse. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Last scripture for the morning. coming from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 21, beginning with verse 12. And Yahshua went to the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. Brothers and sisters, this morning, dealing with the subject, taking black, our culture, taking black, our culture. If we go back to the beginning, if we go back to Genesis, you see that when the creator of the universe, according to the story, and let me stop right there. As a footnote, people often ask, why is, why is there one for uh, uh, evolution or uh, um, creation, creation story, creation story in the first chapter and another creation story in the second chapter, were those two men or two different types of beings? No, no, just a footnote. In the first chapter, what they, what those who interpreted the Bible, the different scrolls, the Yahweh scrolls, the priestly scrolls, and there's one more. Think the East scrolls. So. When they interpreted the Bible, they thought it was the same story and they put the two different scrolls together. So it's not two different creations in the Bible, it's two different scrolls that those who interpreted thought were just tried to put together. Just wanted to throw that in right there. But anyway. The scripture said that the Most High, the Creator, went to Adam to see what he would call every living thing. And he gave Adam the power to name them. Another part of the scripture says he, has, he gave him dominion. Why is that important? According to ancient religions, you have power over something if you can name it. If you cannot name it, you have no power over 
according to ancient religions, you gain power over something by being able to name it. If you can't name it, if you can't define it, you have no power over it. So that's why in one scripture, the Most High tells Adam to name, gives him the power to name the animals. Another scripture, he gave, gives him dominion. They work hand in hand. You can't have dominion over something unless you can name it. If you can't name it, you can't dominate it. You can't have dominion or control over it. So he gave Adam the power to define. He gave Adam the power to define. One of the things that we have strip, been stripped of dealing in Black History Month and Black History is the power to define. People tell us you need to fight for this, white folks, and you need to fight against that, but never once ask, never once ask us what we think about it. The most dangerous person, and I'm talking about whether they be relig uh, conservatives or liberals, they fear a free-thinking black man and black woman. You may try to say there's a difference between the conservatives and there, a, there's a difference between the left and one is good and one is evil, but they both fear a free-thinking black man or black woman, a black man or black woman with the power exercising their God-given power to define. Their God-given power to define. We've been stripped of that. We have let other people define what black culture is and what black culture isn't. What black history is and black history isn't. We've let other people define that for us. So whatever they say it is, it is. Whatever they say it ain't, it ain't. There's a lot of discussion right now going on about their banning books in the in, in schools. And the poster, as usual, black people are being used as the poster children. Oh, they're trying to take our books away. Are they? Which books specifically? Are they banning? We have to be specific. Are they banning Forced into Glory by Lerone Bennett? Are they banning The Destruction of Black Civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams? Are they banning Medical Apartheid by Dr. Harriet Washington? So specifically, what are they banning? See, a lot of times what they do to us is they have us fighting just because they say fight. But we have to always be specific. What are we fighting for and what are we fighting against based on our culture? You think you're going to a rally to fight for black culture and you realize that there's another agenda. They have you out there trying to save the trees and save the whales in the name of black culture. Where they're black whales and, you know, they're trees in Africa. And they'll make up all kinds of stuff just to get black people to join in. Because they know that we have been stripped of our power to define. And the danger in that, going back to Isaiah, Isaiah says, Woe to them that call evil good 
and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. When you can't just, uh, define your existence or your culture, you will have people that will call good evil good and good evil and darkness for light and bitter for sweet. Why? Because you can't define it. What may be good for them might be evil for you. What might be light shining light for them is keeping you in darkness and what might be sweet to them is bitter than for you. Our culture. Our culture and the right to define. I think it was Huey P. Newton, Dr. Huey P. Newton, who said that power is the ability to define phenomena and make it act in the desired manner. Power is the ability to define phenomena and make it act in the desired manner. That's power, definition, the power to define. In the Kawaita theory, Dr. Milana Karinga, who is, I know y'all don't forget about Kwanzaa because it's February, but anyway, you should read this book. Dr. Milana Karinga gave us the definition and called it the word Kuji Chagalia. Kuji Chagalia. He defines it as a commitment to the principle and practice of defining, defending, and developing ourselves instead of being defined, defended, and developed by others. Let me read that again. A commitment to the principle and practice of defining and developing ourselves instead of being defined, defended, and developed by others others. We have to define ourselves. That takes courage. That takes courage. It's easier to let somebody else do your thinking for you. That's what they call mental slavery because it's easier to let somebody uh, do your thinking for you. It's hard to formulate your own ideas. It's a greater responsibility to develop your own ideas. It's easier to let somebody else do the thinking, do the driving, do the heavy lifting. That is what has kept us in a state of mental bondage for all these years. We let others think for us when in reality, we should be thinking for ourselves. Black History Month 2023. The charge is we have to reclaim our ability to define our existence. We have to take back our God-giving mandate to define our existence. Yeshua, the black revolutionary messiah, in the Gospel of Matthew, he went to the temple, and when he went to the temple, he was upset, and he started turning over tables. And some people say, cast them out, and you know, get out of here. Why? It is written, my house shall be called, defined, as a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Black culture is sacred. A sacred house where principles, morals, and a cultural continuity. But other people in the name of being woke 
have made it into a den of thieves. It's a cash cow. It's a cash cow. You get paid for changing black consciousness into wokeness when the two are not the same. Matter of fact, in many cases, they are diametrically opposed. But that's where the money is. That's where the money is. But 2023, if we want to break our mental bondage, which leads to our physical bondage, the first thing we have to do, brothers and sisters, is take black, our culture. As always, we leave you with the Black Messiah motto, stop waiting for a savior and be one. Shalom.